Hey guys, welcome to the next Pi Game tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're going to be working on creating our ship object uh, that the player can control. It'll be at the bottom of the screen. Um, they'll be able to control it with like ASDW on their keyboard and probably press the uh, space bar to shoot. Um, just to let you know what I've already got, um, I went ahead and got, I don't know if you can see this very well because it kind of blends in with the transparency in the background, but it's just the ship from Galaga is the image I'm going to be using. Uh, I also went ahead and um, I don't really want to put all of our ship code in the main file because it will clutter it up. So what I want to do, I made a new file in our program uh, directory over here called ship.py and I'm going to put all of the code for our ship in here. So let's get started on making the, uh, the ship class. So I'm going to make a new class called ship and I actually want to inherit from something that comes with Pygame. Um, let's import Pygame. And Pygame actually comes with a uh, sprite submodule to help us deal with uh, sprite objects that we can put in our game. And that sprite mod submodule actually has a bunch of different objects we can use, but the one we're wanting to use right now is the sprite module that's in the sprite submodule. Uh, so let's go ahead and run our constructor function. And since we want to also run the constructor function of the sprite object we're inheriting from, we got to run this super function here. So this line right here will grab the sprite object we're inheriting from, and it will run its constructor as well. So there's a couple of properties I want to give the ship. I want to give it a width. Well, we, we actually, let's do that. Let's grab its image first. So I want to do self.image. And it has to be called this because the sprite object, uh, the way Pygame works, it specifically looks for a property called image to put the image on the screen. So you want to name it self.image. So self.image equals Pygame.image. There's an image submodule within Pygame that has some functions for loading images in. So Pygame.image.load. And you just want to supply the uh, file path to the image. Uh, so we're already in this directory, so we just want to type in ship.png. So ship.png, and it takes that file path as a string. Uh, now, one thing to note, you can imp uh, load the image this way, and your game will uh, it'll run, but you'll probably notice uh, once you get two or three images on the screen, it's going to start really going slow. And... Uh, I don't know the details of why this is, but after you load an image into the self.image variable, what you want to do is run another function on it called convert. And that pretty much, uh, what, whatever data this image has in it, it cleans it up so Python or uh, Pygame knows how to use it. And um, don't know the details of what it is, but it. Uh, it's going to make the game run a lot faster. If you don't do this convert, it's not in the format Pygame likes, and it will cause the game to go really slow. Um, and there's actually, there are two different converts. There's convert, and then there's convert alpha. And we're going to want to use the convert alpha because our image has transparency. If I just do convert, it's actually going to fill that transparency in with white space, which I don't want. So self.image equals pygame.image.load. So it's going to load this picture into this image object right here. And it's also going to run its convert alpha function. So it'll make it uh, able to blip the image to the screen uh, fast every frame. Again, if you don't put that convert alpha, it's going to go real slow. The other thing we need to do is get the rectangular properties of this image. And these rectangular properties are how Pygame knows how to move the image around the screen with X and Y coordinates. And you have to name it this as well because Pygame expects it. So self.rect, you have to have a variable called self.rect. And that's going to equal self.image. This image object we have created up here has methods it can run. And one of the methods is called get rect. So all you do is self.image.getrec, and it's gonna. What this does is it's it's got this image right here, and it's gonna run this getrec method, which returns all the rectangular properties about this image into this rect uh, variable right here, so we can access them. So later on in our in our code, if I type in self.rec.x, 
that'll actually give us the current x coordinate of the um, the ship. Or if I type dot y, it'll give us the y coordinate. I think you could, you can also type in stuff like width, and it'll give you the current width of the image or height. Um, so other properties we want to give our ship. Uh, I want to give it a velocity x, which is what uh, at this point in time, how fast is it moving along the x coordinate? And since at the start of the game, it's not going to be moving at all. Uh, it's just set to zero, and we'll do the same for velocity y, and set that to zero as well. I also want to make one called speed, and this is when we press A or D, because I'm using ASDW for the controls. If I press A to move left, how fast do I want his velocity to change? Like, how fast do I want him to move? How many pixels per frame? Uh, I'm just going to set it to five right now. So when I, so what this will do, and we'll implement this in a second. Uh, when I press left on the keyboard, it's going to set his velocity x to negative speed. So he'll move negative 5 pixels along the x-axis. Oh, excuse me. Um, the next thing we want to do, and you want to give every, every uh, sprite object that you put in your game uh, this method, we're going to make an update method. And this is the method that's going to run every single frame of our game on this object. Uh, and pretty much what we want to do is we want to do self.rec.x plus equals self.velocityx and self.rec.y plus equals self.velocityy. So what this does is every frame of our game, it's going to grab the object or the ship, ship object, it's going to grab its current x coordinate and add our current velocity to it. So you think if our speed, if, if we're pressing, let's just say we're pressing right on the keyboard, it's going to assign five to our velocity x, and what this does down here, it adds five to our current x position. So it'll look like the ship's moving right. Uh, and if we press A, it'll move left. Um, I'm not really uh, gonna implement an up and down, but if, it, if we could press up and down, it would do the same thing along the Y axis as well. Um, okay, so let's go back to our main uh, main object here, or not object, but main file. And what I wanna do is do from ship, I'm gonna access that ship uh, file we just made. I want to import the ship object from that file. And what I'm going to do in here is we're going to, uh, I'm going to make a variable called player because I'm just going to reference this ship as the player in our code. So I'm going to say player equals the sh uh, ship object. So now any anywhere I reference player in here, uh, the player is a ship object that's on the screen. Okay. Uh, so the next thing we want to do, um, Python or Pygame gives us a really cool tool called a group, a sprite group to work with. And you can pretty much instead it's like say I had a player and like I made a bunch of enemy objects like enemy one enemy two I had like a ton of enemy objects here what you would have to do is somewhere in this loop when you draw them to the screen you'd have to type like player dot draw enemy one dot draw enemy two dot draw you'd have to have all these lines of code just to draw the stuff to the screen but Pygame gives you a really cool tool where you can just throw all these sprites into a group and then reference the group down here in one line in your code and say update the group and it knows how to update and draw everything to the screen in like one or two lines of code and I'll show you how to do that so we're gonna make a group called sprite group and it's gonna equal pygame.sprite because it's in the sprite submodule and it's gonna equal the sprite group now we need to add this player object we just made to this sprite group and the way you do that is sprite group dot add and just what sprite do you want to add we want to add the player uh, so let's clean some of this up there we go so this is kind of like all our setup up here and then the uh, main loop down here um, now I want to kind of go over this this main loop we have here there's four things in a, in a game you typically want to do uh, in the loop um, four or five, I can't remember. I'm gonna write them all down in a comment right here. So I wanna tick the clock, and this will help maintain the frame rate. I want to, oh, sorry, handle events. So I can uh, check for any key presses that the user could be, uh, could be uh, pressing. The third thing we wanna do is update all the objects. 
And don't get confused because I, I, I remember when I first started this, I used to always get confused. When I say update objects, I don't mean you're actually going to see them update on the screen. It's like updating all the objects in memory, all the different uh, the states the objects are in. Because after you update the objects, then you render the display. You actually draw the objects to the screen. Um, I used to think when I heard update objects, it's like actually drawing them to the screen, but that's a separate section at the bottom. Updating it is just updating all that object's attributes for that frame, and then you draw them to the screen. It's two separate steps. Um, so to update all the objects, which the only one we have right now is the player, we can just do uh, sprite group. We can access that sprite group, and it has an update function itself. And what this does is every sprite that's part of the sprite group, it runs its update function. And if you remember, in the ship file, we gave it an update function. So for every sprite that we added in the sprite group, group, run its update function. So you can see how this is really helpful. We don't have to, if we had like 20 different objects we created up here for things that go on the screen, we don't have to run, we don't have to type like 20 lines of code down here to update each one. We can just throw them all in a group and update that group. Same thing with drawing them to the screen. You don't have to actually put 20 lines of code to draw everything to the screen. You can just do sprite group dot draw. Now, it, the the group's draw method does take a uh, it does take a parameter, and that parameter is just what are you trying to draw it to? Well, we want to draw it to the display. So there you go. So you have tick the clock to maintain frame rate. We're we're going for 60 FPS. Handle all the events, which the only event we have right now is the quit event. Clicking the X button at the top. We want to update all our objects, and we want to render those objects to the display. Now, hopefully I didn't make any typos here. Let's actually see if this runs. And, oh, sorry, I had to retype this code earlier, and I guess I, I typed, uh, I had a typo right there. Just ignore that. I, I typed in set modes instead of set mode. All right, there we go. And <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. My ship's actually at the top left corner, but it's really tiny. Um, uh, so I think what I might do is just edit the image to be a little bigger, or it, we'll do this all in the next video. I may actually just run, uh, show you guys the transform module that's in Pygame where you can actually scale uh, you can scale images and rotate images and all types of stuff with them. We'll probably use that. I'll do that in the next video. I'll actually show you how to make this image bigger. Uh, you can use whatever image you want. So if your image is the right size that you want, uh, that's fine. You can just use it. But uh, the next video, I'll go over the transform tool at the beginning, and we'll actually make this uh, ship a little bigger. And we'll actually he starts off at the top left corner because his X and Y start at zero by default. But we'll actually get him set up to where he's at the bottom of the screen. But I'll see you guys in the next video.